Hello, and welcome to the Class Insights Podcast. My name is Connor Bice, and I'll be your host today. We have the opportunity and privilege to speak with one of our famous researchers. Uh, I'll let her introduce herself here. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of a joke where some of the recent publications of our reports, our analysts have been called researchers and haven't been called out specifically. So turn the time over to you. What is your name, researcher? <laughs> My name is Lauren Manzione. Um, I'm an analyst with the ARCH team. Um, where I've been working for the last past two years. Um, today we're going to be talking about a recent report that Lauren wrote about turnover and the clinician experience. We had the fortune of introducing a new question to our survey in the Arch Collaborative, asking clinicians their likelihood of leaving their organization in the next two years. We added this question only a few months before COVID hit. Uh, we were mostly curious if there was a relationship, if if clinicians were more dissatisfied with their technology and their EHR, were they more likely to leave their organization? Uh, it just so happened that there also uh, came a pandemic upon us at the same time. And so uh, this report, we don't have any information or any data before the pandemic hit, but uh, the insights that we discovered since this time in, in early 2020 have been, been really insightful. Um, Lauren, if you could give us just kind of a, a quick summary, what's What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of this report? What's the, the first thing people need to be aware of? Yeah, definitely. Um, we have really found that there are a lot of factors related to a clinician's likelihood to leave their organization. And one of the um, most prominent factors that like, has the strongest correlation that we saw of anything else was burnout. Um, I don't think that's a surprise for anybody. We've seen really from our data, record-breaking um, rates of burnout um, and something that has been a real struggle across the industry. Um, seeing that there's a strong correlation between that, um, we've started looking at some of the different factors that are related to both turnover and burnout to try to kind of address both of these issues at the same time. I think it was something like 60%. If you are completely burned out, 60% of those individuals are planning on leaving their organization in the next two years. Is yeah, that right? That was accurate. 60%. The good news though is there weren't, it wasn't a, an extremely large group who, mm -hmm. is, who is extremely burned out. So um, the first thing that, that when I read your report, the first thing that I take away is if we can prevent people from getting to that extreme level of emotional fatigue, uh, then we have a higher chance of, of keeping them on as, as staff at your organization. Is that, is that yeah, true? That is a great point. Um, we see that there are, you know, there's maybe only less than a thousand clinicians that reported that they were completely burned out. And, and then we're, you know, 60% of those were um, very likely to leave in the next few years. Um, but then if we look at those lower levels of burnout, those that are approaching that completely burned out, um, there were tens of thousands of clinicians in those groups who also had much higher rates of reporting being likely to leave compared to the um, collaborative average, which was about 18%. Right. And so to give everyone uh, an understanding of this data set, there were about 59,000 total clinicians who had responded to this, to this single question. And so when Lauren is saying there were 1,000, it's 1,000 out of 59,000. Mm -hmm. um, which group was the most likely to report leaving? Was it physicians? Was it nurses? Who, who's most likely to leave? Uh, definitely the nurses. Those have the, the highest rates of being likely to leave. Um, they're also one of the most burned out groups. This is something we, I was, I was actually talking to a nurse yesterday uh, and we were talking about the, the challenging circumstances. She became a nurse during COVID. She graduated nursing school and started uh, while everything was on lockdown. And she said it's been uh, different than she expected it to mm -hmm. be. Uh, the, the patients are abrupt. Uh, they are worried even when they're not very sick. They feel like they're very sick. Um, they're, not, they're not kind. Uh, organizations are doing their best to handle the pressures that COVID has placed on them. Uh, it's just, it's a challenging time to be a nurse right now. It's very challenging. Yeah, and from that the alternate perspective, I recently, one of my kids was in the hospital um, overnight and I was with them and having that extra stress of having to go in and check in and make sure that we had been screened for COVID every day, even though we were there multiple days and having to wear masks and having my four-year-old with a mask on. There's all of these extra stresses that everybody that's touched by the medical community is dealing with. And I think our nurses definitely do get a lot of the brunt of that because they're really the face of medicine. They're the ones that are doing a lot of those daily constant interactions with patients. Yeah. 
So it's a challenge. You know, we're seeing higher levels of burnout. We're seeing high levels of turnover, uh, at least reported turnover. What can organizations do? How can they help their clinicians to want to stay, to feel appreciated? What are, what are some best practices that you know of? Yeah, um, some of the really good news is a lot of these factors that are associated with turnover are also associated with burnout. So by addressing these things, we can kind of kill two birds with one stone and try to um, alleviate some of the stress and some of the burnout and then also try to you know keep the organizations going without losing so many people. Um, one of the factors that was correlated the most is how the clinicians feel about their organization. Whether they feel that they they trust the organization and the leadership, whether they feel like IT is on the same side that the clinician is on, that they're working together to try to have the best experience they can with the EHR. Um, and, and really that, that, that whole process is more than just what is their experience like when they're typing in the EHR. It has a lot to do with, you know, do they have good internet access? Do they, um, if, if they have a question, do they have someone that they can ask? There's a lot of different facets to this, but it really comes down to, do they feel that they trust their organization, they're on the same team, and that they're working together to have the best experience? Yeah, we, we get this question a lot. You know, we reported that trust in IT is, is also very influential for EHR satisfaction, right? It's one, mm -hmm. of, it's one of the most important variables that we measure in the collaborative. Organizations then ask us, well, how do, how do we build that? How do we build that trust? It's so important. Um, I think the things that you said are absolutely true. They need to be able to reliably access the, the equipment that they're using, mm -hmm. right? If your computer screens uh, are, are lagging, if your Wi-Fi is slow and, they, and they, it just takes time, well, I need to go see my next patient, right? I don't, I don't have time mm -hmm. to wait this extra 30 seconds for this computer to boot. Um, so simple things like that are, are really important. The interpersonal skills are also really important, right? It's, it's not, you can't just sit in the back room as an IT analyst and, and think that you're solving everyone's problems, right? There has to be this really strong relationship between IT, uh, nursing, physicians, making sure that their voices, the, the clinical voices are being heard. Um, the answer might not always be, I'm gonna do exactly what you're asking me to do, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna do something that will make your life life better, life easier. Yeah, and I think one thing that is often overlooked that we've seen a lot of really positive movement from is just closing that communication loop. Like you mentioned, you might not always get the answer that you want, but the important thing is that you're getting an answer. Yeah. So if you're having a problem that's easy to address, um, and then IT can just immediately say, here's the answer to your problem, that's great. If it's a kind of solution that says, you know what, this is gonna take a month, or this is gonna take a year, or we can't do this because it's, um, it's against compliance. Whatever the answer is, those clinicians need to have an answer. And just having that communication loop closed can really help them feel like someone's actually listening to what I'm saying and my needs are important. Yeah, absolutely. Another interesting thing that I read in your report was the impact of, of training, especially workflow specific training. Can you provide any additional details on what does that mean? How, how does that make a difference? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I don't think it's a secret or a surprise that training is important to be able to be satisfied with the EHR, um, which then is also correlated with um, being likely to leave. Those that are more satisfied with the EHR are less likely to want to leave. Um, but I think just saying, you know, we have training isn't enough. Um, we want clinicians to be able to know all the basic functionality of the EHR and know how it works, but it's not really helpful to show a, a clinician, here's 10 different ways to do this one thing. What we really want is for everyone to have the capability of working at the top of their license, to be able to say, for my specialty, for my, um, for, you know, for as a physician or an APP or whatever, you know, specific area that you're working in and the type of patients that you have, we want them to be able to do the best, most efficient workflows that they can and use the right kind of personalizations that really makes sense for them. And we find that those that agree that their training was very specific to their own workflow, um, those are much, much less likely to say that they're going to leave their um, organization than those that didn't have workflow specific training. Interesting. 
I, I've had two calls with organizations, one a, a small community hospital and one a larger health system that had its own uh, Community Connect sites associated with it. And both of them brought up the importance of workflow, specialty specific workflow training in especially their onboarding process. They both of them had very similar things to say. They said, if we, if we tried to train these doctors uh, how to use the system in a way that wasn't relevant to them, it just led to a whole bunch of additional questions. It made their day feel chaotic, out of control, things that they, they felt that they didn't have to do. Uh, and they don't have to do that, but they just didn't know any better, right? And so mm -hmm. looking at some of these, these contributors to burnout that you've listed in your report, uh, chaotic workflow is, is one of those that's, that's really high up there. Mm -hmm. um, anything we can do to help clinicians feel like their day is less chaotic, that it's more in their control, that they have the ability to, to go through the patient information and document all the things that are required in the way that they feel is best, uh, it just makes a world of difference. It makes their lives just feel more controllable. Absolutely. I think um, we've had some organizations say really their goal is to have um, the clinician go in to the first day that they're really working after they've completed their training and to be able to immediately go and care for patients. And I think in order to be able to do that, you need to have training that says this is how you care for your patients using the EHR, not just this is how you use the EHR. Exactly. The two have to go hand in hand. For too long, we've been, this is the EHR and this is your patient. Mm -hmm. The true revolution, I, I believe, in healthcare will come when, when these are merged together and doctors and nurses are using the EHR to help them inform the care that they're giving. Uh, it should be seen ideally as an aid and not as a hindrance. Absolutely. So if somebody wanted to learn more about your report, where could they go? What, what resources does class have available to, to learn more about this topic? Yeah, so the report itself is available to anyone on our website. So it's classresearch.com slash archcollaborative. Um, on that site, we also have you know, dozens of case studies, many of which are mentioned in the report. Um, we also have other reports and um, clinician satisfaction. Um, a lot of them go into the, the specifics of like that trust in IT that we mentioned as well. So if you would like to learn more about EHR satisfaction, burnout, or turnover, uh, please go to that website that Lauren mentioned earlier. We truly believe that there is a relationship here and that the, the more clinicians can trust their organizations, the better they can use their technology, the more likely they are to stay at your organization. Thank you for listening today.